family. So we'll keep that, those families in our prayers. Thank you. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world 
for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. pray. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly, the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace that in our words and deeds the world may see your life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading today is from the book of Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, ye mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with the people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? And what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent you before Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him. And what happened with Shittim and Gilgal? What you may know the saving acts of the Lord, with what shall I come before the Lord? and bow myself before God on high. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000s of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to to love, kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. tabernacle 
who may abide upon your holy hill. Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. Lord, who may abide upon your holy hill. They do not slander with the tongue, they do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. Lord, who may abide upon your holy hand? The second lesson today is from the book of Corinthians. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim, proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolishness in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing, things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, the righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite any young people forward for a children's sermon. Welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm wondering if you've ever been tried to do this before. Somebody asks you, can you pat your head like this? Can you all pat your head? Okay, can, now can you keep patting your head and can you rub your tummy in a circle? It's hard. I think I've gotten better at it over the years. Okay, so I bet if you practiced it though, you'd, you'd be been getting better at it. You don't have to keep doing it. You can go home and do it. And then if that becomes too easy, you could do it while walking around, or you could do it while like marching in a circle. That could get really tricky. Um, but you know what? If, if you're one of those people that it was easier for, the third thing you need to do is not brag about it. <laughs> that might be the hardest thing, because you can't say, hey, look. 
Could you handle that? All right, well, there's three things in our Old Testament reading for today, and I had to, I didn't want to forget them. They're so simple, and yet I have to have them right here. But we hear from, from Micah, it says, what does God require of us? And three things, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. Marilyn is counting for me. That is, so, that is so kind of you. No, God asks us to do all of those. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. And it might seem really simple, but that's actually, that's actually a, a lot to do. Does, you know, I was trying to think of a way that kids understand justice. Um, I bet, has anybody heard of the Justice League? I had to look up who was in the Justice League, and forgive me if I get it wrong, but I, I believe it's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They're just, everybody's just like waiting for me to, <laughs> I wrote it down. Flash and Aquaman, I haven't, I'm not as familiar. I thought, hey, we can identify with superheroes and know that they support justice in our world. Superheroes are pretty cool. So God asks us to be like superheroes, to speak up when we see something that's not just. And God wants us to love kindness. And that's a beautiful phrase, love kindness. I think, do we know kindness pretty well? Maybe, maybe, okay. But then to walk humbly with God. So that's maybe a harder one too. If you're really good at those things, you still have to be humble with God. You still have to listen to what God has to say to you. So after church, maybe you could ask somebody, you could ask somebody, hey, can you do the the thing that Pastor Lord asked us to do? Can you pat your hat? one hand on your head and rub your tummy in a circle at the same time? Maybe, maybe not. And if they can't, say that's okay. God still loves you. I also have something, the Justice League reminded me something. I have something for everybody after church for, for younger. Um, I have this treasure box. Hey, Marilyn, do you remember my treasure box? Yeah. See, Marilyn visit, visits me sometimes during the week. But I realize not all the kids know about... I have another... Well, I have another treasure box. Remember what the princess is? And now there's stickers and things? Well, anyway, I'm going to have that treasure box after... Yeah, after church, because you know how that gets. But there's something that reminded me there's a couple superhero items in it. So you'll have to wait and see what that is. But, but come see me right after. I'll be back here. Okay, we're going to say a prayer based on that reading from our Old Testament. You ready to pray, Marilyn, and everyone? Okay. Dear God, help us to do, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. Thank you for all coming up here today. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. Please be seated. This week wasn't an easy week for many people in our country or even locally. It was especially difficult to watch the news, to hear of yet more shootings, to see footage of police brutality. This morning I woke up and checked the news and found out that there was a deadly car crash last night in New York, a shooting at home in LA. And I stayed on the news for a little bit longer and found an article about fighting in the Middle East. And another article about the war in Ukraine, which I have to admit is in the back of my mind, even though we know it's still going on. It doesn't bring us uh, the attention it did when we first learned about what the people of Ukraine are going through. And more than that, I know that each week when we gather, we all bring our personal struggles to this community. Sometimes they're spoken aloud and others know what they are, but other times they're only known by God. One of the words on the list for those epiphany star words that were handed out was the word justice. And I know at least two people here receive that word maybe more. And I've been hearing from one of those people that they hear that word everywhere around them since they've chosen that word for the year. The other one um, is about five years old and parents said, I will go home and explain justice. But they know, they're old enough to know. This week's scripture is no exception to hearing about justice. In our Old Testament reading from Micah, we hear a familiar voice from the prophet who asks God's people, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God? So simple, right? But when we find that as we go to live that out, it's not so simple. This past January 27th was also International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And the date is from the liberation of Auschwitz in 1945. You may have heard this writing by a pastor named Martin Niemöller. I want to read it for you today. He said, first they came for the communist, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, but I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. These words strike me every time I hear this. They remind me that I'm called to speak out for others. 
not for the sake of having someone to speak out for me, but because it's what I would want someone else to do for me. It's what God calls us to do for justice. It's part of our calling to love our neighbor. And I wonder if we see the Holocaust as as an event that can still teach us something today. We teach about the history of what happened and say never again. The Lutheran Church also holds some tension between deeply negative thoughts that Martin Luther had about Jews and also pride for people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer who gave his life um, to speak out against Hitler's regime. Leading up to the year 1945, I often wonder if those good Lutherans thought that the world still needed prophets. Were they smart enough to figure things out on their own? Had God already revealed everything that we needed to know? Or was God still asking people to look for someone to speak hard truths on behalf of God? And who would that be? Where would that person come from? Where would they be given the strength to do so? Dietrich Bonhoeffer was one such prophet, and he was willing to die for what he believed and what God had taught him about the value of each human being. He had come to the United States and would have been safe, but he chose to go back to protect others, to speak out for others. I think about the celebration of 75 years of this church in just a week. Obviously, plans were were underway for a while. World War II had just ended. The congregation was just beginning its ministry. And the people gathered not in a perfect world, but one that needed God's presence and God's voice and God's guidance so that it could speak to their lives. Do we expect God to speak to us in 2023? What does that look like? Will those people look and sound like us? Or will they be more like John the Baptist, who was dressed strangely even for his day, wearing camel's fur and than eating wild honey and locusts. MLK was another prophet. He was raised to speak up for justice and equality for African Americans. And the people of power did not appreciate what he had to say. They didn't see him as an equal human being. Not worthy of the same rights someone with white skin was given in our country. And much of what he believed and spoke out for are given today. We take that for granted. But at the time, he was a holy agitator, disrupting our comfortable ways of living so that all people could have a chance to live fully and fairly. MLK and Dietrich Bonhoeffer certainly st- spoke out in times of great controversy. Controversy. Our biggest mistake in our world today is to think that there is nothing to, for us to speak out for in the world. But God's command to speak is very present with all of us. There are prophets among us who have been raised up to speak truth. We want to believe that our country and our world have evolved and we're better than we used to be. We used to believe that people could be bought and owned and forced to work and treated as less than other humans because of the color of their skin. And we say that that's no longer legal, that's been so many years. But we still couldn't give African Americans full rights to, to many. Um, privileges in our country, like voting until 1965.
We were not able to see their value in the world. And it made God weep. Because none of us are free until all people are free. When we think about the injustices of our world today, we know that many prophets are needed to speak on God's behalf. There are many who are hungry, many who don't have shelter, who don't have health care, who are traded as sex slaves, who haven't heard a message of grace and love for all people. Or worse, they've been told about God's love, but told that it's not for them. We are called to speak out for these people. These are who God, God tells us to through the gospel. Jesus speaks about them in our reading from Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says that all the people who are mistreated and less valued in society are blessed because God's kingdom is for them. God gives us the authority to dwell in these hard places as Jesus did. Jesus was not afraid to go anywhere to speak on behalf of God. He even went to the cross because our world was so afraid of the truth that he spoke. God commands us not to be afraid. If we have even a fraction of the conviction of a prophet, we will make a difference in this world. Coretta Scott King said, the the love, truth, and courage to do what is right is the strength to love. We thank God for Jesus as the ultimate example of love so that we would know God's justice in a troubled yet redeemable world so that one day all people would know God's love. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Cultivate humility in your church. In gatherings of every size, teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Merciful God. The foundations of the earth bear witness to your faithfulness. The mountains and hills echo with your holiness. When we mistreat your creation, show us the error of our ways. Inspire us with reverent awe to honor all you have made. Merciful God. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love, mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers. Merciful God. Bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power and presence at work where it is least expected. Give your life, strength, wisdom to all in need, especially those we say aloud or silently in our hearts, including the Floyd and Gartner families. Merciful God, as with your people Israel, remind this congregation of your saving acts. Remind us how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weaknesses. Establish the cross as the center of our life together. Merciful God. Praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place. Trusting you, accompany, trusting you accompanied them in poverty, persecution, and in every trial. We trust you abide with your people always. Merciful God. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of the peace with those around you. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power 
and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. in peace follow the way of Jesus thanks, thanks be to God, God.